Hello friends and fellow gamers, MKXJump here, and this week we have a brand new hero release to the game, Betty. I'll be giving a follow-up video in the future about whether I think her skills are any good and how to use her in the game, but the more important thing for this week is the event. What can you do this week to get some good rewards? Is it worth using your items, or is this event a bit of a skip? Also, next week we've got a huge event coming, so we'll take a little sneak peek at that, and I'll let you know what I think you should be saving and expecting for the weeks ahead. Before we do all that though, let me remind you about Patreon. It's a way you can support this channel financially by clicking the link up there in the corner of the screen to get some more information about that. Being a patron gives you access to cool perks on our Discord, as well as access to account reviews, which will normally be happening on Tuesdays. However, in the coming weeks, I'm going to be extraordinarily busy with a house move, so we won't be doing as many streams over on Twitch. So with those disruptions, expect August to be a funny month for that kind of stuff. So if you don't see as many YouTube videos or you don't see as much streams, that's why. But hopefully by September, I'll be settled in my brand new house. So if things change behind me, that's why. Anyway, if you are interested in that, as I said, there was a link up there or in the description for info about Patreon if you want to support me financially to get those perks. Either way, let's go ahead and check out this week's event for Idle Heroes because it's potentially a good one with a brand new hero. Let's go. So we begin by checking our login rewards, and each day we'll get ourselves three heroic summon scrolls and 150 gems. So make sure you log in daily to claim all that great stuff coming your way. Now, for the cool events this week, it's pretty standard. We've got a Palace of Eternity, which allows you to swap any of the following heroes you see here. So we have Elena, Alamac, Natalie, Vulcan, and Geista, and you can swap them into Betty, the brand new hero for this week. We'll be looking at her skills towards the end of the video or in a more in-depth video in the future. So make sure you subscribe or stay tuned for all of that stuff. The Palace of Crystal is a way that you can go ahead and get Eternal Crystals because they're needed for the Palace of Eternity. It's 10 for every swap. So this Geista, for example, will cost 10 crystals to get a copy of Betty. You can also go ahead and swap heroes if they're like 6 star or 10 star. It will just require you to use as many crystals as copies inside that hero. So 50, for example, if they're 10 star. As I said, to get those crystals, you need to do 40 heroic summon scrolls each time. And you'll see below here, locked away is 15. To unlock that, you need to go and buy the $100 value pack or use story gems to grab that. For most people, it's a bit of a waste doing that unless you really want to get copies of Betty on day one. Some people might want to do that to test her, but really she's just a bog standard hero that hasn't been transcended yet, so there's not really much need to. Now, if you look at the hero lottery, Betty, every copy you get of her this week will get you four star armor. So I suppose that's all right for those of you lacking armor. New players might appreciate that. And we have the summon prizes, which will give you rewards for every heroic summon scroll used this week. However, you'll notice there's no fancy additional bonuses for using heroic summons that we would normally expect, like stuff in transcendence events where we can get sublimation or artifacts. In fact, the only thing we have is the pink ocean. So I'll mention that a little later on. But because there's none of that stuff, I would say immediately for a free-to-play player, it's probably worth not using your scrolls. If you really do want to get copies of Betty, you can just get them when she becomes a Transcendence hero, because that will let us choose our hero, and Betty will be selectable. Also, if you do use scrolls, you typically want to, if you're a free-to-play player, to be getting yourself sublimation and artifacts. I say free-to-play player, any player, that's pretty much good practice, so I think most people should be saving their stuff. However, if you are a heavy spender, this week may be an exception to that rule. More on that in a second. We have ourselves a hero exchange event. This is really nice. This is giving us Mockman Oreos for 4,000 each. That's really cheap, actually. So grab those if you're looking for heroes to awaken. They could be potentially good. They're light and dark, so they can help with Heroic Miracle. Lots of good reasons to pick those heroes up. On top of that, we have a Luck Relay, and this is actually pretty impressive. And these are pretty cool. You get 100 Prism Story Gems and 10 Heroic Summon Scrolls for the first five books, along with a free edition of another 100 Prism Story Gems and 10 more Heroic Summon Scrolls. So that's not bad when you consider Prism Story Gems value. You get 2500 in $100. And if you go ahead and buy this entire relay, it's $97. And you're getting a total of 2700 Prism Story Gems. So in Prism Story Gem value alone, this relay is pretty darn good. And if you look as well, we're getting a total of 20 cores of Transcendence here. And if you add Charm and Agility to that as well, that's an additional 10. So these two things will actually take you to 30 cores of Transcendence. So from 97 bucks, getting all those cores and those Prism Story Gems ain't bad, along with 500,000 Stellar Shards and 200,000 Stellar Shards right here, plus 2,000 Gems, 
30,000 artifact essence, and of course, additional bonuses like scrolls and more gems. So this all adds up to a lot of Prism Story gems, normal in-game gems, scrolls, cores, and stellar shards, which can be really, really useful. Those of you that are heavy spenders will really be interested in the end here because it will get you the pink privilege. So scrolling down real quick to the pink ocean, let's explain how this works. Every scroll that you use this week will get you a point. Now, each 100 points is going to get you 10 Heroic Summon Scrolls back. So that's quite nice for keeping your Heroic Summon Scrolls total quite high. But what's more important is if you do that all the way up to 2,000, you actually get a core if you went ahead and bought the relay completely out and got that final pack to get the pink privilege. Every 100 gets you a core, as I said, so that's 20 cores in total. But in addition, you're getting 50,000 Stellar Shards then 50,000 Crystals of Transcendence, and it keeps intermittently changing between those things. Now, that's not a lot of Stellar Shards in the grand scheme, but for people that are not really valuing sublimation or artifacts because maybe they're too late in the game for that stuff to even add up, then maybe that's actually pretty appealing. I know for me, as I'm like already pretty well established with this stuff, I, I don't think it's worth me going ahead and spending. I, I might do, though, because when you combine the value of just the look relay in general, it does just make that stuff really interesting. However, this requires me to use 2,000 scrolls. And I think the big thing is that's going to tempt spenders. But do remember, it is August right now. So then we have a Transcendence event, which will happen when Betty becomes Transcended, which will happen in September. And then in October, we have Halloween. And then after that, we've got to worry about Black Friday, which is in November. Then we've got Christmas in December. And further to that, we have Chinese New Year in January. So we have a lot of really good Heroic Summon Scroll events coming up in the future that will potentially even give us the new currency for Destiny Heroes. So I am very reluctant to use scrolls. I don't think the Pink Ocean is the thing to chase. I can certainly see why people would want to because Stellar Shards and Crystals of Transcendence are very attractive if you're looking to build or improve your existing Transcendence Heroes or make your team stronger by adding more. I understand that. But I, I don't quite think it's the best value thing to spend scrolls on. And this can then lead to people saying, oh, MK, you always say to save your scrolls. Well, we are at a point where Anniversary happened back in June, and it is now pretty much a hard wait until another big event comes. Now, next week's event is the Shishi event. I'll talk about that in a bit. Um, that's actually going to be a pretty good event, but that's an Imps Adventure event, so you won't really need much. It's mainly the stuff later on, those Heroic Summon events like halloween like black friday that's when people really want to make sure they've got scrolls saved of christmas chinese new year especially so i know it's only august but saving scrolls can take some time so that's generally why i would encourage you to save them and i'm guaranteeing you there will be some very good events in fact halloween is typically very good christmas is very good chinese new year is very good and if you're a spender black friday is incredible so just bear that in mind this week, we do have a Moonlight Gift, though, so that could also be tempting for you. If you spend 100 bucks, you're getting 100 Heroic Summon Scrolls and a copy of the new artifact. Now, that's not absolutely incredible, but if you look at last week's event, you needed to spend $200 to get a copy of the new artifact. So this week, it's half price, I suppose. But then again, you are getting less other rewards as well. But generally, the other rewards from last week's Moonlight Gift were actually pretty crappy. They weren't like a bunch of things that I was thinking, oh, I really want this stuff, right? There wasn't even a flag in there. And if you bump up to $200, you're getting 200 Glorious Relics and a Sublimation Chest, some Spiritual Essence, or half a Core of Origin. Now, I don't really think that's actually worth the push-up. So if you were going to spend, I can see why you'd do that. But like these Moonlight Gifts, it's almost like the devs don't want money. They're getting progressively worse. Like, I don't know why anyone would spend an extra 100 bucks for that. Right, considering they give out sublimation for free pretty often, spiritual essence aren't really worth it, and half a core of origin isn't even a full core. And for a hundo bucks, I wouldn't consider this. I find it very surprising that they're putting that price tag on this. So yeah, weird move from the devs. <laughs> We're gonna need to see something really incredible next week for me to be like, okay, I'm actually gonna part with my cash. I say that though, the look relay is pretty good, so I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people do just buy that anyway, and then bump it up to 100 to get a copy of the new artifact. That wouldn't surprise me. That spending seems reasonable. But then, if you do choose to completely pass on this, because you actually don't need any starry gems or anything, um, then yeah, I suppose you could. However, that said though, uh, you can totally use Prism Starry Gems to then convert them to normal Starry Gems, and then convert them to contract Starry Gems by buying cheap copies in the auction house and destroying them in the Soul Temple. That's probably 
a very valuable thing to do actually for next week's event because there is likely some really good packs that you can get to get you a lot of rewards. So the Shishi event, with it being Imps Adventure, this will be pretty low in investment for what we need because there's no currency you need to save up for Imps Adventure. So there's going to be nothing in next week's event where it's like, oh, you didn't save the resource, you can't do it. Everything from Imps Adventure to Shelter Mission is just a matter of having some very easy stuff on your account like Four Star Heroes or in the case of Imps Adventure, just playing the game. Now, granted, it may need us to spend to get more dice, and there may be rewards for doing more completes in Imps Adventure, and I think that's where having contract story gems on your account could be valuable. We might see that they add a Gala in as well to get some Awakens in here. The Shishi event should be pretty good. It might even have a component that says use 20,000 or maybe 40,000 gems to get some other additional bonuses. And I think this is our first big event opportunity for them to give the new currency for Destiny Heroes as rewards in this game. The only concern there is what are the devs then going to do for other rewards as well, because for a lot of newer players or even mid-game players, those rewards mean nothing to you because you do not have access to Destiny Heroes yet. So I'd be really intrigued how the devs are going to start balancing those rewards. It may just be like we've already seen, where it's similar to the Moonlight Gift, where you just select the reward you want. That wouldn't surprise me. I think we just have to wait and see, so hit that subscribe button to see what next week's event entails so yeah all in all this week's pretty solid you can use scrolls if you want to i would rather save because there are better events coming in the future moonlight gift is merely just a sprinkle on top of a pretty good look relay you don't have to go ahead and buy any of this though and i think the main thing people just want to pick up is make sure you grab that mockman copy as either an awakened copy or maybe to help you build a mockman the eos same thing maybe you're looking to build an eos as a tenant for a vulcan for example and um, yeah, I suppose this event's pretty decent. Let's go take a look at Betty to see if she's any good. Now, I will be giving a more in-depth video about this, but a quick rundown of her skills. She's able to twine, which is quite exciting, so that's pretty good on a hero. Her basic attack can twine as well. She twines when she gets hit, and she twines on her active skill. So this is pretty much a mage for the Shadow Faction that is able to twine opponents, whilst also bleeding them as well, and having some decent-looking damage. People asking about whether she's going to be a good new first hero to use that could replace Eloise. A lot of people asking how I would use her. So I'll be making a video tomorrow talking about that a little more in depth. So if you're interested, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. So I'll be answering whether I think she's a good early hero as a first E5, or actually how I plan on using her if I am going to use her at all on my accounts. So stay tuned for that, guys. Hopefully you find that content useful. And thank you so much for tuning in. Either way, I'll see you next time. Have a fantastic week. And of course, happy idling. Happy idling.